So n prime negative 568.803 times 1 plus 62.2e to negative 0.092t to the Excellent. Times this prime, but one prime is zero, so I have 62.2 times this prime. Yes, negative 0.092t times this prime, but negative, careful. Very good. Uh, no, no, t prime is one. Yes. Very good. So now let's see how we can, if we can simplify this a little bit. I have a negative number in front. I have a negative number here. This will go to the denominator. This will go to the denominator. And this will stay in the numerator. So 1, 2, 3. I'm going to multiply them. So I have... I have... Uh, obviously, it's positive. So 568... 0.803 multiplied by 62.2 and multiplied by 0 0.092. That's the number in front. So this is 3294.918287. Everything divided by, and the equal symbol is here. Nothing is negative anymore. Oh. Right? Negative, positive, negative. So we got this weird number. And this is e to 0 0.092t in parentheses 1 plus 62.2 e to negative 0 0.092t to the second power. So this go, went to the denominator with a positive exponent. This, which was, had negative 2, it became positive in the denominator. So let's read the question one more time. Find the rate at which the disease is spreading after 20 weeks. What do I have to do now? Exactly. Do we all agree? So then n prime of 20. This is super ugly. So... Do not delete what you had, because I'm going to use it. And I'm going to divide now. Divide. In parentheses, don't forget, um, by E. Parentheses again for the power, 0 0.092, 0 0.092 multiplied by 20. Close the parentheses for the power. Come down, multiply now, do not close the parentheses just yet. Multiply by another parentheses, 1 plus 62.2. And again, e2, parentheses for this power, negative 0 0.092 times 20. Close the parentheses for the power. Uh, Come down and close the parentheses. Square. And close the final parenthesis for the denominator. You put times 2. In the <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I would have pulled my hair. <laughs> Thank you for catching that. <laughs> Good. So the rate of change has two measurement units. It's a ratio, right? So the measurement unit has to have a, um, the um, answer has to have a measurement unit coming from the top over the measurement unit coming from the bottom. So the rate of change in which the disease is spreading after 20 weeks. So we got 4.368. Yes. I should say 4, but you know what I mean. So into the, the spread of the disease, into the um, whole situation, 20 weeks later, um, the rate of change, it, it catches on or it, it um, pulls in, the disease pulls in four more students per week. Or it spreads at the rate of four students per week. Yes, 
Because sometimes when you get these figures and these numbers from the board problems, is it that they tested many more students and they could have tested negative? So that's how you get some of these in between figures. Like there was an eleven point eight. Oh cases. no, it's all it's all no, it's it, so there is no way we can create a function that gives us always easy grades. We create a function that is an approximation. So for example, it's a very good question. Thank you. Awesome question. Let me explain this. Perfect. So a function like this normally looks like that. We created this function, but when we, at one first week, the second week, the third week, we may get this point. Here I may get this point. Here I may get this point. But there is no way I can find a function that goes exactly through this and gives me the integers. At one week, nine people. At week two, 15 people. At week three, exactly 25 people. So we create the model, but the model will never be perfect. So that's why we get weird answers. Because we can't fit through all these points. We cannot fit a model that always works. One gives us this, five. For two weeks, it gives us 15. For three weeks, it gives us, no, it's not going to happen. Very good question. Yeah, I just wanted to know if it took into account the room for error. Like false positives or... Well, false positives and false negatives, and it's possible. This is more, more of a probability thing. This is, this is a model that gives us um, the number of students um, that get infected every, every week, per week. Yeah. This is like, things like this are also based on the knowledge of the disease itself and how it spreads in the incubation period. Right? A lot of yes, a lot of people get uh, involved in this. Not just mathematicians, but physicians and, and patients. Yeah, it's a it's a huge effort. It's a huge effort. I have not participated in a study like like this, so I don't know exactly. Um, they come up with a function and they test it for another five years. Or just that they just throw it out there. I'm not sure. I mean, FDA normally, I have no idea what's happening now, but FDA normally sometimes tests medications for 10 years or more before they introduce them. So. Very good. So this is the end of the material. We can start reviewing if you'd like or, or practice some more of what we just did. Yeah, this is this is not a friendly function at all. Uh, look how long it took us even to differentiate it and then simplify it a little bit so I can put in the graph and calculate. So what would you like to do uh, to do next? Are we reviewing that package next week, Ms. Lee? No, we will start right now. Oh, okay. We can start right now. I just wanted you to... Uh, Make sure that you have no secrets concerning what we co covered in class. So please tell me what you like to do. We have 20 minutes. So I'll do anything you want me to do. Please choose. Through the packet, I guess we can we'll just start with the first one. Sure. Absolutely. Please redo the problems we do in class, please. When I sit down and write the test, I will look at what I did in class, what we covered in class. So, oops. Oh. I swallow the app. I'm sorry. So we're given f of x, which is the cube root of x plus 1. Sometimes I may need it as x plus 1 to 1 third. I don't know. Depends on what I'm asked to do. But always remember that option. Keep that option in mind. Okay, find the relative extrema, which means max min. 
uh, present all extrema and the x values at which they occur. Identify their type, relative max, min, explain their findings. OK, so we're given a function. We don't know if it has max, min or not. What is the first step that we have to perform? We have to find the derivative. Yes, the domain, yes, you're right. We're not graphing it, but, but yes, the domain is already numbers because uh, the index is 3. Any odd index is always friendly. There is no restriction whatsoever. The only problem uh, would be an even index. So we're asked to find max min. What do we have to do first for any function for max min? Thank you very much. F prime of x, one third, x plus one to negative two thirds times the inner function prime, which is one. That's nothing then. So one over three, the cube root of x plus one squared. OK, I have the derivative. Now what? Excellent. That is the next step. Critical numbers. Perfect. Critical numbers come from two possible sources. f prime being 0. Is there a chance for f prime to be 0? No. no. What about f prime being undefined? Yes, for which number where the function is defined? Excellent. So this is a critical number. So go back to the table from negative infinity to infinity. F prime and F of x. We have negative 1 and 0. And it's undefined at negative 1. And the function value is 0 at that point. Plug it in the function, and you'll see it's 0. OK, so I have the table. I have the critical number in the table. I found the value of the function at negative 1. I plugged it in, and I got 0. So um, now what, do I, what would be the next step? Okay. Uh, number between negative 1 and negative infinity. To find the sign of the derivative. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good. So let's plug it in. So look at the derivative and say, oh, it's always positive. correct. Why is it always positive? Because it's a squared, even if it's a cube root, right? It's always positive. This quantity will always be positive no matter what you plug in. So what do we conclude? Is negative 1, 0 a max or min? No. no, nothing. Because the function is always the function is always increasing because the derivative is always positive. The function will always be increasing. No max min. Very good. Questions? Graph the function 8x over x squared plus 1, showing everything. Any questions on the previous problem? 8x over x squared plus 1. Of course I'm going to do this. I don't want to waste my time with that 8. It can wait. So here we're asked to graph. And yes, we'll start with the domain. So can anyone give us a domain of this function? Okay. 
Exactly. There is no restriction. X squared plus 1 can never be 0. Very good. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Good. So let's find the uh, x-intercept for f of x equals 0. x-intercept. When is a fraction 0? Good. So x equals 0. That is also the y-intercept because it's the origin. Now I want this. Notice that I finish and I exhaust everything I can find about the function from the function itself first. And then I go to the rest. So in number two, I want limit. Sx approaches negative infinity from 8x over x squared plus 1. And also limit. Sx approaches infinity from 8x over x squared plus 1. Let's determine these limits. What do you think? Which of these two, top or bottom, is stronger? Good. So then what will happen at infinity? I have one cake and I want to share it with everyone on the planet. What do I do? Exactly course. So then y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. So 0 and 0, y equals 0, horizontal asymptote. We're done about the function. There is nothing else we can learn from it. Step number 3, what do I have to do next? Next, I have to. Excellent. F prime of x. Leave the 8 outside. Don't waste your time with it. Top function prime. Very good. Times the denominator. Minus the top times the denominator prime. Perfect. Over the denominator. Excellent. <clears throat> well done. Great. Okay, let's simplify this. Eight outside, x squared plus one minus two x squared over x squared plus one squared. Descending order, etc., etc. And uh, negative x squared plus one over x squared plus one squared. Negative 8, x squared minus 1. How do I factor x squared minus 1? Excellent. Perfect. OK, after all this effort, I have this first derivative. Now what? Finding the critical numbers first. I need the critical numbers, otherwise I don't know what side. So f prime of x undefined. Undefined is never undefined. x squared plus 1 is never 0. f prime of x equals 0. Two options x equals 1 and excellent great job I go back now negative 1 and 1 now I study the sign but I refuse to plug in this piece why do I refuse to plug in this piece
because it's always positive. I don't want to waste my time with it. Disregard it completely. It's always positive. You want to plug in here, there will be a waste of time. This is always positive. So let's plug in negative 10. Negative 10 plus 1, negative 10 minus 1 with minus in front. The negative stays, but 8 doesn't mean anything. When it comes to the sign, it doesn't mean anything. This is always positive. You can keep it there if you want. I only need the sign. I don't need... But the negative cannot be eliminated from the from the thought. But 8... Well, I'm not going to plug anything in 8. I'm only trying to find the signs now. No, no, no. I think, I think uh, Maddie has a different question. When I solve when I solve the equation, this is a number that I can divide both sides by. Mm -hmm. So this expression is zero only if this is zero or that is zero, not when negative eight is zero. No, I'm not. I'm only saying I will not consider this when I determine the sign. But when so, you determine the sign, that negative sign. Of course. That negative 1, negative 10 plus 1, negative 10 minus 1. Of course, this cannot go away. I'm only eliminating what is always positive so I don't waste my time. So it's really a negative 10 and negative in front, so it's positive 10 plus 1. So it's positive times a negative, so it's negative. So this is negative, this is negative, this is negative. Very good. So it is negative. Let's plug in 0. Yes, because it's positive 1, negative 1, and negative. Very good. Awesome. And finally, let's plug in 10. Negative in front, 10, 10. Very good. I do have to determine the function value at negative 1 and the function value at 1. So at negative 1 is negative 8 over 2. At positive 1 is 4. Right? Negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Negative 8 over 2 is negative 4. Positive 8 over 2 is positive 4. Now the moment of truth, right? That's when we know when we made a mistake or not. These two have to work well together, correct? Okay, so let's try. From 0 to negative 4. Is that supported by the first derivative, the sign of the first derivative? From negative 4 to 0, yes. Is that supported by the sign of the first derivative? From 0 to 4, is that supported? And from 4 to 0, is that supported? Okay. Now, we need to try and see what happens with the second derivative. Ugly. So here's the first derivative, one more time. Leave negative 8 alone. And then the numerator is x squared minus 1, and the denominator is x squared plus 1 squared. So now I want to find the second derivative. Ready? Negative 8 stays. The denominator becomes x squared plus 1 to the fourth. We differentiate the top, and we get, excellent, times x squared plus 1 squared minus. We keep the top, and now we have to differentiate the denominator. When we differentiate the denominator, we get I'm differentiating this to Excellent. Well done, Chloe. Thank you. Of course, I will do what? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Mandatory. So I will factor out a 2x. I will factor out an x squared plus 1. And only then I can simplify 1x squared plus 1 with a 1 with 1x one squared plus 1. What is left from the first term? Excellent. Then minus. So I have this out, and I have this out. So I have to multiply 2 by these two, because I only took out this and this. So I have minus 2x squared and plus 2. I'll stop promise when I finish this. So this is negative 8, 2x, and in parentheses we have negative x squared plus 3 over x squared plus 1 to the third. I change the sign by moving, by re, uh, factoring out. So then I have uh, 16x, x squared minus 3. So I took out a negative 1 that changes this into positive. So that a times 2 is 16. I copy the x, and then I have to when I'm factor on negative 1, I get x squared minus 3 inside. So we have to find the inflection points, and we have to find the sign of the second derivative.